chapter 8. In the space of the following heartbeat, I learned I still knew how to fear. I froze rooted to the ground for an agonizing second before my tongue unstuck from the roof of my mouth and I forced out in disbelief. Fedra? Ariadne, she answered, trying to sound assured, but with a slightly hysterical note that betrayed her excitement. How did you... where... did you see? Is anyone... I tried to ask the dozen questions jumbling in my throat. While I struggled for words, I noticed Theseus take the club from her in a smooth and unhurried gesture. His body was poised and alert, his eyes scanning the dark horizon, listening intently, though all I could hear was the surf crashing on the rocks below and the sound of Fedra's quick breaths. No one is coming, she told him loftily. The palace sleeps. Everyone has drunk too much wine, and now they are snoring like pigs. There isn't a guard awake, I promise you. We have hours before the dawn stirs, any of them. We have hours. We? Theseus slunk around the rocks that sheltered us, sleek as a cat, barely detaching himself from the shadows as, a sur as he surveyed the area clearly unconvinced that Fedra hadn't been followed. Whilst he patrolled, I grabbed her arm and hissed at her. What under the use are you doing here? Are you insane? Only as insane as you, she answered, petulance sharpening her retort. How did you know we were here? I demanded. I followed you. I heard her pride at my utter surprise. I followed you with Daedalus, and I followed you to the prison. I knew what you wanted to do. I could tell the moment you saw him that you intended to help him escape. You followed me? Then where have you been all this time? I demanded. She raised her eyebrows at me, listening. I was furious and not a little embarrassed at how easily I had been outwitted by my younger sister. She drew herself up in the moonlight, small and slight, but full of ferocity, I sighed. I would have given anything to keep her out of this. If she came to harm, it would be my fault. And where did you get the club? I wondered if she was mad enough to have raided the armory. I wasn't sure that anything would have surprised me about her now. It's my club. Theseus interjected. I hadn't noticed him return, so subtle had his movements been. It's all clear, as she said. So the palace truly slumbers? He asked her. Now that Theseus addressed her, her voice was as smooth as cream. Oh yes, it is dead to the world after the revels of the evening, she assured him. I retrieved your club from the store in which the offerings from Athens have been placed. I felt my stomach clench. What if it were missed? But Theseus looked at ease, and seeing how natural the club looked in his hand, as though it were an extension of his arm, I felt safer. This club made me the Prince of Athens, he told us, and his voice made me think of water flowing over stones, cool and rapid, with a force all of its own. Without it, I would not be here at all. Thank you for returning it to me, he added to Fedra, and I could tell, even in the dim light, just how deeply she blushed. Will you carry on? she asked him, almost shyly. I could see she was torn between triumphant pride at her daring and un uncharacteristic hesitancy in asking him, to go on with the story she had heard without us knowing she was there at all. He smiled. Of course, he said. I was happy in Athens, but with my labours behind me and a glittering future ahead. But as I set my hand to the business of being a prince, tending flocks, presiding over disputes, observing Aegeus, and striving to be 
as great a king as he was. The rumblings of war began to reach us. The Palantidae were to march upon Athens, resentful that Aegeus sat upon the throne, and now had such a mighty heir as me. They were fifty sons of Pallas, who were dissatisfied with ruling Attica, and had hoped to take Athens when Aegeus died. Now their hopes dwindled, and they thought instead to take it by force. It was the Palantidae who killed your brother Androgeus. They were bitter and jealous of anyone's success, and his victory in the games had enraged them. It was they who lured him to the mountains where the crazed bull rampaged and were, where he met his lonely death. I want you to know that it was I who cut each and every one of them down in turn. When I had killed all fifty sons in front of him, I slew Pallas as well. Your brother's death is avenged at my hands. I had felt cold before when he talked about Medea, but at these words I burned with a strange mingling of pride and shame. Proud that this heroic man had slain my brother's murderers, ashamed that my father had brought him here in chains to pay the price for a debt he had already redressed. Theseus continued. So I had rid the city of another threat and given its people hope and fate that after Aegeus they would still be ruled by justly, by me. But still a terrible sadness overcame the city like a cloud. Everywhere I looked, I saw bleak and despairing faces. I heard the weeping of women everywhere I turned. I asked my father, what troubles our citizens? What makes them cry and howl and gnash their teeth? We have a prosperous city, our laws are fair, and we keep them safe. What reason have they to give in to this despondency? The heavy lines that had been smoothed out by Aegis's carefree joy in the past months had now returned, etched more deeply into its, his old face. He could not meet my eyes as he spoke again. Theseus, perhaps if you had been here... We would have stood a chance. But almost three years ago, King Minos of Crete sent his navy against us, and we could not withstand their almighty power. His ships stretched the length of the horizon, their sails billowing triumphantly, and his soldiers poised with ash spears, mighty shields, a hail of arrows, and terrible swords glinting in the sun. Such an arsenal he brought to bear upon us. It was too great. We fought. We fought him barely. And we may well have driven him out, for the courage of the Athenians is more powerful than all the wealth of Crete. But Zeus favoured his son, and Minos's request he sent a plague to us. Aegeus was silenced by the memory for a few moments. His voice was low when he continued the tale, and I strained to hear his awful words. The strongest of our men died like flies, their bodies piled up on the beach before we had time to burn them, grey and stinking like a hole of fish brought into land that is too vast to be eaten and spoiled in the sun. Throughout the land our people sickened, and fell within hours. The funeral rites could not keep up with the scores of death. The spirits of the unburied cried out, their moans mixing with the howls of the grief-stricken living. Aegeus told me in his faltering words that Athens could not endure, and that they had to submit before they, one of them was dead. As Theseus described the horrors that my family had inflicted upon his people, I felt a loathing for Minos that churned and twisted in my belly like a monstrous photos. A nightmare of a baby far beyond the creature my mother had birthed, the Minotaur, devoured a handful of men and women each year. 
I felt as though my rage could burn cities to ash in one breath. But hate Minos as I did, I was still his daughter, and Theseus was, would expect me to show loyalty to Crete and to my father. He would think that the suffering of Athens would bring me joy. If I cried, he would think me a liar. I set my jaw and listened. It pained Aegeus even to say it, but he explained to me his surrender and your father's terrible condition for peace. He shook his head. I had been the depravity of simple thieves and bandits. I had never imagined the scale of a king's cruelty, when he has endless wealth and unchecked power to indulge his most crazed and filthy fantasies of revenge and torture. What Aegeus described to me was beyond any evil I had so far encountered. Fourteen children, young men and women, who were barely beginning their lives, torn each year from their parents, brought to this place, paraded before Minos to satisfy his lust for power, and then fed, alive and screaming, to my brother. I could see that Theseus would have known in an instant what to do. No doubt or fear would have held him back for a second. Not this man who had cut down every horror and injustice in his path so far without hesitation. The day dawned when the lots were drawn. A grim silence hung in the hall. I could feel the weight of it pressing down upon me, like the heavy sky that Atlas bears upon his mighty shoulders. Heracles had borne that burden too. I knew it was a king's duty to hold up the sky for the citizens to prevent from them from the being crushed beneath it, no matter how much his back may buckle or his muscles scream for mercy. But Minos had never spoken like this about the terrible privilege and price of ruling. I had never heard before that a king should lay down his life for his kingdom until Theseus stated it as though it were an obvious, undeniable truth. And so, as the thirteenth lot was drawn and the vicious tension in the room began to dissipate just slightly, one more to go before this room and its stinking shame could be left behind another year, I stepped forward. I would not let another child of Athens face this horror. I would go in his place. Beside me, Phaedra was wrapped, spellbound by his clean, decisive heroism. Of course, he would sacrifice himself for his kingdom. I could see his path set before him with no wavering or confusion, no apathy or reluctance. He would stride on, never doubting for a moment the right direction for a man and never afraid of twists and turns of, or obstacles. He would cut aside the thorny brambles that ensnared me, the twist of revulsion and pity for that infant monster, the murky shadows of fear and ro loyalty that bound me to minus the tangled skeins of anger and love that held me to pacify. He would slice it all away with one sweep of his sword. I yearned for that easy knowledge, that fate that would make it so simple to walk on. Still, whilst he may have forged ahead with righteous conviction, I would wager that not everyone saw it as he did. Your father? I asked. Surely he could not allow you to do such a thing. He swept his eyes across me almost contemptuously for a second. Allow me? How could he prevent me? How could anyone? Of course, he counseled against going and tried to persuade me that I could do more good by staying in Athens and helping him to build up our navy so that we could bring war against Crete. But that could take years, and how many more dozen of our children 
would be sent to die in Minus's labyrinth. I could not allow one more. He turned his icy glare upon me. I wanted to step into that chill light. I wanted him to freeze away the hot sweep of shame that it was my father, my brothers, my home that had caused so much pain and suffering for the his. I wanted to atone for that craven cowardice that shivered up my spine, that the thought of his navy coming to crush us, with Theseus standing tall at the prow of the very first ship looking for his prize. Would I have run down the beach to prostrate myself at his feet, to back this great commander, to burn my palace, raise my land, and take my away with him? I was on fire at the thought of what had already been, what might have been come, and what was still ahead. I longed to submerge myself in the clear waters of his certainty. But Aegis was right, Fedra's voice was earnest, breaking through whatever it was that held Theseus to me in that moment. You should have raised an army, far better to wait until you could win and save them all, rather than die now in the place of just one. She had not understood. She did not know why he had come. She believed it to be a noble gesture, but a futile one. I almost laughed. Having heard his story, she still believed that Theseus could walk into that labyrinth and not return. Fedra, he said to her, a hint of warmth and humour in his voice now, no icy glare for her. You amaze me with your boldness. Already you have achieved great feasts feet that belie your age and your sex. He inclined his head towards the club she had brought back to him. But what lies ahead of me, little princess, is too dangerous even for you to risk. I thank you for what you have done tonight. I owe you more than I can say, and I give you my word that I will repay that debt a thousand times. But I must, must ask one more favour of you, lovely Fedra, and that is that you go now back to your bed and you do not breathe a word of this to anyone. His words and his warm tone thrilled her, I could see, but he had taken the wrong tack with my younger sister. Back to bed, she sputtered, incredulous. I followed you to help you to escape. Ariadne and I will guide you to your ship so that you can sail back to Athens and bring your army. That's the plan, is it not? That is why Ariadne brought you here? Princess, I think you do not know what armies do, Theseus said. You would not wish for one at your shores if you did. I do not bring war to Crete. I have come to walk with my brothers and sisters into the lair of the Minotaur. Such is my duty as the heir to Athens' throne. How will your bones, crunched and scattered across the labyrinth floor, sit upon a throne? She demanded. I flinched at the image, but she was fearless. What good will your company do when all of you are devoured by the monster? Asterion, I wanted to correct her, but she had the right of it. He was no shining star. He was a brutish monster, and she was right not to cloud her vision with memories of our brother, cradling him as he slept, and the raspy click of his infant tongue. She was free to stride ahead, determined. Theseus continued to smile. Her defiance did not seem to offend him. I assure you, princess, I will not come to that. But I cannot tell you more. I would not risk you. You must remain innocent of it all. What about Ariadne? Fedra showed. She cannot lie to our father. I could keep a secret. If wild horses were wrenching me apart like sinuses, pine trees. But Ariadne will crumble the moment she is asked. Why would you not send her away? Ariadne will not be here to be asked. Theseus said. Fedra stilled. 
Why not? Pieces blessed at me. I heard Douglas's words clear as a bell, and I knew that he thought them too. Harriani will be with me, he said evenly. She has risked herself too much already in freeing me tonight. She cannot stay, Fedra gasped. And I can? Without Ariadne? You would... She would... She looked from me to Theseus and back again, panicked. I cannot stay without her. The urgency in her voice was undeniable. Theseus was about to speak, but I placed a hand on his ha arm and stopped abruptly. She's right, I told him softly. She cannot stay here any more than I can. I took a hard breath. When you kill the Minotaur tomorrow, at this, Fedra gasped. I carried on, the words coming from some place within me I had not known before tonight. Minus will suspect she knows something when I am gone. We have to take her with us. Where I was proposing, we went, I couldn't say. Theseus and I had not spoken our plans aloud. I had not known for certain until this moment that he meant to take me with him, though I knew I would have to go. And in what capacity did I live him, with him? I wondered. His hostage? His accomplice? His wife? Theseus sighed. Ariadne, I will not deny a request from you. She must not come near the labyrinth. You will be outside the door. When I have finished with the beast, I will guide the hostages out, and you and I will run with them to my ship. Fedra must be there, already waiting for us. She stiffened. Her little fist clenched in victory, and her eyes luminous. I will be there, she said. My men have sailed but a short distance away, he told us. The black sails disappeared from Cretan view, but my men are ready to row back when darkness falls again tomorrow. They will be waiting me for me at a small cove just east, east of here and will take us out to where the ship hides. We will have sailed before any alarm is given. When the palace awakens the next morning and Minus discovers what has happened, we will be far beyond his reach. Fedra listened intently as Theseus gave her directions to the cove, but my mind was far adrift, out on the wine dark waves that would carry me away from here tomorrow. I was startled back by the pressure of Fedra's hand squeezing mine. I will see you in the morning, sister, she was whispering, her eyes like stars, and then she was gone, her dress fluttering in the breeze behind her as she ran back towards the palace. She was gone, as abruptly as she had arrived, and Theseus and I were alone again together. I'm sorry, I said. I didn't know she would follow us. I didn't realize... Theseus smiled again, that easy, careless smile. It will be good for you, he said, to have her as a companion. I swallowed, not sure what he meant. Would I be alone once we arrived in Athens otherwise? Where did he plan to be? He moved closer to me and caught a strand of my hair between his thumb and finger. I couldn't find enough air to breathe. Theseus filled all the space in front of me. You will be glad, he continued, to have your sister dance at your wedding. He kissed me then. It was a bolt of lightning, a shattering of the sky, a shaking of the earth and everything that stood upon it. And when he drew away, I held my face between his hands and fixed me with that steady gaze. And the world grew still once more. I knew that despite the chaos and confusion left in its wake, my path was clear. I would guide Theseus through the labyrinth, and then he would take my hand and guide me to my future. I would be his wife, this prince of Athens, and our life would be different to anything I had known within Minas, marble walls, and different.
to anything that Cyprus would, could hold. I handed him the thick bowl of twine. I had held it so fast throughout the hours we had talked that it had left deep imprints carved into my palm. When you enter the labyrinth tomorrow, I told him, you must fasten this to the doors once they are bolted behind you. Secure it to you firmly, for without it, you will never find your way back out again. Believe me, for it is truly impossible. It will be dark, so dark you cannot see an inch in front of you. I will leave your club beside the doors, for I can enter tomorrow. I God will, no God will co accompany you inside. No Cretan will set foot within that place, so there is no risk it will be found. If any of your fellow hostages should flee through the maze, they will die in there. Tell them to stay where they stand and let you go ahead. Walk straight, do not turn, I swallowed. I saw him striding through the darkness. The stink of rotten meat and the clattering of bones would not deter him. The pounding of my brother's hoofs would not alarm him. He would not imagine for one moment that he could die. But I could see this living flesh, this pulse that bat so steadily beneath my fingertips, torn and tattered and haunting, hanging in strips from my brother's jaws. In the darkness of the labyrinth, he, how would he know from which direction the monster would strike? A staring's terrible horns could impale him if he charged at Theseus from the impenetrable gloom before Theseus could re even raise his club. I know that you have faced many battles, I said, but you have not seen the Minotaur. You do not know his strength. I blinked away the tears that blurred my vision so that I could look at his face and memorize every detail of it to store in my mind. I will not forget one instant of this. I will return to you, he said, and the gentle tone of his voice broke me. Until now, he had been commanding, strong and powerful. The sudden tenderness in his voice was something I was unprepared for. A storm of sobs rose up in my throat, and I wanted to cling to him like barnacles to a rock. You must wait by the doors, he said. I will return, and when I do, we must move quickly. We cannot delay. With the Minotaur gone, Freed will strike against us. So I must be back in Athens as swiftly as possible to raise my forces whilst it is vulnerable. But most of all, I need to get you away from here before you can be found. Our plans were made. I knew I should be wracked with doubt. But I knew that I would do this. Betray my father. Send death to my brother. Wrapped in a red cord that would bring his killer back to me. Desert my mother. And of course, leave Crete and never return. I will not say it was an easy decision, but it was the only one I could have made. The world was on fire and Theseus was a shaded green pool. Will you lock me back up now? Theseus asked. I laughed. I suppose I will have to. I don't know how long we had spent out by the rocks. Too brief a time, but long enough to change everything. I wanted to stay there with him. But to prolong it any further was to risk losing him altogether. After tomorrow night, our future stretched out before us, and I would have years ahead of me with him. I would be a part of his story now, the love he won in Crete that gave him his victory. We crept back to his cell, quiet elation fizzing through my veins. You will not drop the thread? I murmured as he pushed the heavy iron door open. He pulled me inside the dark room. I will hold on to it, he promised. I will not let it go, whatever happens. He pushed me against the wall and I didn't care that 
the harsh stones scraped my skin. His kisses were urgent, not soft like they had been by the rocks. I felt like he was branding me. Tomorrow, he mumbled harshly into my hair. Tomorrow we will be free from here. The waves will carry us away together. I long to be on that ship with him now. I may have been plotting treachery against my family, but it was my body that was betraying me just then. I could not command my legs to carry me out of that miserable cell. Go, Ariadne, he was telling me, though his arms were clamped around me like iron bracelets. Panic was rising within me. My head was filled with a ringing blare. I knew I had to leave, but I did not know how to tear myself away from him. It went against every instinct, every nerve in my body that was burning for his touch. But he was releasing me, and somehow I was moving away and through the doorway back into the courtyard. The door closed, and I wanted to howl at the wrongness of a barrier between us. But my hand was fitting the key back into the lock, and although my palm slipped, slick with sweat, slipped, slipped on the metal, the lock thudded into place. I rested my hand against the wood for a moment, waiting for the black spots to stop dancing in my vision, waiting for the roar in my head to disperse. I wondered if Theseus was pressed against the door as well. This slab of ancient wood and iron separating our bodies. It would not be long now.